Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over another example problem of when to use the ideal gas equation. So in this problem I'm going to go over three separate problems that require the ideal gas equation. The one way you can know that you will need to use the ideal gas equation is if there is no change going on in the problem. If uh, there is a change, like for example, if they're changing the volume of the gas or the temperature of the gas or the amount of the gas or something like that, then you know you're going to not use the ideal gas equation. You're going to use uh, one other or some other equation like the uh, like Boyle's law or Charles law or Ava, you know Avogadro's law or Gay-Lussac's law or some some other gas law that will involve the change of a gas. So, but if there is no change, then the ideal gas law is the equation that you're going to be using, right? And so I want to point out right away that there's two forms of this equation that we're going to use. There's the form that has Kv equals nRT where you have moles um, but then you have the uh, form where instead of having moles, you have mass in grams, which is G, uh, over the molar mass. And so remember taking the mass in grams and dividing by the molar mass or multiplying by the molar mass as a conversion factor to go from grams to moles is like dividing by the molar mass. So we replace the number of moles with just the mass divided by the molar mass. So we could use this form as well. And we'll, we're going to show that, or I'm going to show that in this, in this video. So uh, let's start with problem number one. So uh, how many moles of a of krypton gas must be added to 175 milliliter incandescent light bulb to yield a gas pressure of 117 kilopascals at 21.6 degrees Celsius? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is list out the information you're given. So we're given that the uh, volume of the light bulb is 175 milliliters. So that's going to be V for volume. So 175 milliliters. Uh, we're also given the pressure. So the pressure is equal to 117 kilopascals. And finally, we are given the temperature. So the temperature is equal to 21.6 degrees Celsius. So there's our information. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure that the units of all of this are in the proper units for the equation. And that's going to depend on the ideal gas law constant that we're doing, what, what form or what value of that constant we're using. And that depends on the units in the constant. So here are two constants. Here are the two constants. Well, it's the same constant, not two different constants, but they have two different values because the units are different. Here we have liters and atmospheres over Kelvin and moles. But for this one, we have liters and kilopascals over Kelvin and moles. So the different units leads to different values but it's the same constant. So which one are we going to use depends on what units we are given and what units we need to convert to. So first of all, uh, temperature is going to need to be converted to Kelvin. So we can't do anything until we convert that to Kelvin. And then um, the volume has to be uh, converted to liters. So we got to convert uh, milliliters to liters. Now, as far as the atmosphere, I'm sorry, as far as the pressure goes, um, depending on what pressure we're given, um, we can either use this or this. So this one has atmospheres, this one has kilopascals. So uh, unless we want to do another conversion, we might as well use this form or value of the R factor because it already has kilopascals in it, so we don't need to convert. So let's go ahead and use this value of our R value. All right, so the first thing we want to do is convert volume to, from milliliters to liters. So we're going to have to multiply that by a conversion factor. So one milliliter on the bottom and 10 to the negative three because milli means one one thousandth. So we're going to put one one thousandth of a liter on top. So milliliters cancels out. 
and the volume is 0 0.175 liters. And this needs to be converted to Kelvin, so we're going to add 273.15, and that's going to give us 294.75. So 294.75, and that's Kelvin. Now, when we add and subtract the value, the the number of digits we keep is dependent on the number of the least number of decimal places. So here we have two decimal places. So the last digit is in the th uh, the, the hundredths place, and the last digit here is in the tenths place. So our answer should be marked off or ended at the tenths place. So I'm going to put a line under the seven to remind myself to stop there. But I'm always going to keep at least one more digit because I don't want to have a rounding error when I use this in further calculations. Okay, so now I have everything I need. Now I'm going to use the equation. So here I'm looking for moles. So I'm going to use the form that has moles in it. So, um, so PV equals NRT. I'm going to solve that for moles. So that means that N is equal to PV over RT. So let's go ahead and plug in the values. So I have uh, pressure. Pressure is 117 kilopascals. So 117 kilopascals multiplied by the volume. The volume here is 0 0.175 liters. So 0 0.17, oops, 0 0.175 liters. And then on the bottom is your R. We're going to use this R value here. So that's going to be over 8.1345. And that's going to be uh, liters, uh, kilopascals over uh, Kelvin mole. And then we're going to multiply that on the bottom with the temperature, which is 294.75. So 294.75, and that's going to be Kelvin. So now that we have everything there, we're just going to cancel out the units. So we have kilopascals on the top, kilopascals on the bottom. That cancels out. Liters on top, liters on the bottom. That cancels out. We have Kelvin on the bottom, Kelvin on top here. That cancels out. And we're left with moles, which is the unit we want because they're asking for moles. So now we just calculate everything out, use our calculator, and we get the answer. And we get 0083596. So 0 0.008, let me double check that again, 8539653. And that's moles. I was about to put Kelvin. It's not Kelvin. It's moles. And that would be the answer. Um, now, with regard to sig figs, we need to check our sig figs. So um, remember, with multiplication and division, the the rule the rule is is that you your answer should have the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the least number of sig figs. So here we have three, here we have three, here we have five, and here we have five. So three is the smallest. So here we have one, two, three. These zeros are never significant. One, two, three. So we're going to cut it off after the nine. We uh, drop the nine. We're going to have to round this to a four. So the final answer is 0.0025.
zero point zero zero eight five four moles. Moles. I'm going to put moles down here. So that's the final answer for that part. Okay. Part number two, part B. What is the volume of an incandescent light bulb that contains 1.176 grams of krypton at a pressure of 1.70 atmospheres and a temperature of 97.0 degrees Celsius or 97 degrees Celsius? Okay, so in this part, again, we're going to write down all the stuff we know. So here uh, they're giving us the mass in grams, so we're going to, that's G. So the mass in grams is 1.196 grams. And we're given the pressure in atmospheres. So P for pressure, that's equal to 1.70 atmospheres. And they're giving us the temperature. So the temperature is 97, oops, I should write T for temperature. So T is equal to 97 degrees Celsius, but we're going to want to change that to Kelvin, but we'll save that for later. And that's it for now. Now notice that we have grams here, and they're asking for volume. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use this form, since the form here has the mass in grams, right? And it also has the molar mass in the equation, but we can look up the molar mass of krypton in the periodic table. So let's do that now. So krypton has a molar mass of 83.80. So we'll write that here. So M is equal to 83.80 grams per mole. Let me double check, 83.80, that's correct. Okay, so I have the molar mass, I have temperature, I have the mass in grams, and I have atmospheres. So I have everything I need to solve this problem using this equation here. So this second equation here. And since I've got the, the pressure in atmospheres, I'm gonna go ahead and use this R value here since we have atmosphere in the as part of the units of the R value. So now I'm going to use that equation. So here we go. So they say, what is the volume? I need to solve this for volume. So that means I'm going to have V is equal to GRT. So GRT over and then over P, so pressure. So now all I need to do is plug in the value. So I have 1.196 grams. So that's going to be here. So 1.196 grams multiplied by R. I'm going to use this value, R. So that's going to be multiplied by 0 0.082058. And that's going to be liter atmospheres over Calvin mole and then I want to I want to multiply that by temperature now temperature I'm going to have to add 273 to that so I'm going to add 273.15 and when I do that I get 370.15. So that's 370.15. I'm going to put a line under the zero because the least number of decimal places is what we're looking at for our digits. So, but I'm going to keep the 15 for uh, the calculation purposes. So I'm going to put here the 370.15. So that's going to be 3. 70.15 and that's going to be Kelvin. Oops.
Sorry about that. Okay, so. Uh, so now I have this. All right, so let me fix this. So there we go. So now I'm going to divide by pressure. So the pressure I have is 1.70 atmospheres. So 1.70 atmospheres. So now I just make, make sure that everything cancels out. That's supposed to cancel out. I'm supposed to have volume unit left because I'm solved for volume. So here, um, uh, this is, oh, I forgot. Uh, oh, I, wrong, wrong one. Oops, so it should be G, GRT over M, not pressure. Why don't you guys say something to me? Okay, here we go. Yeah, I almost, almost made a big boo-boo. And the reason that I figured it out is because grams has to cancel out. And I couldn't find anything that canceled out, which led to my thinking, okay, I made a mistake. So molar, molarity has to be in there because molarity is grams over moles, so the grams will cancel out. So here, the molarity I have here, 83.80. So 80, oops, 83.80 grams per mole. All right, now we can cancel out. All right, so grams cancels out grams. Moles cancels out moles. And atmospheres, oops, I forgot atmospheres. Oh, it's down there, it, it's there, I forgot. All right, so that's down here too. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? All right, so that 1.70, 1.70 atmospheres. All right, so the pressure is there because I had to divide pressure here to get it down there. So it should be M times P. All right, now, now we're good. Now we're good. Okay, sorry about this. I, I am not usually this inept in solving problems. Uh, but it's a good lesson in that it's showing you that you can actually find your mistakes too if the units are not canceling out, right? This is what this is why I always harp on this with my students that write down the units, make sure they cancel out uh, and then you'll avoid mistakes. If you have units that are supposed to cancel out, then you're not canceling out. Then that leads you to uh, realize that you made a mistake somewhere. So this is a really good uh, uh, example. So I'm glad I'm glad it happened. All right. So now I have this. Oh, so the Calvin cancels out, cancels out there. And so the only thing left should be volume and we have liters. So that's a volume unit. That's great. So now all we need to do is calculate the answer and then we'll go from there. And the answer is 0 0.25499, 0 0.25499. Okay, so I'm going to, what do I write the answer? So I'm going to. Let's say, do I have room? I'll write it over here. So zero point, so the answer is zero point two five four nine nine eight. And that's gonna be liters. All right, so that's what the calculator gives me. So then we have to decide the sig figs. How many sig figs should we have? For those of you interested in that, um, remember the rule for sig figs is that when you're multiplying and dividing, your answers should have the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the least number of sig figs. So here we're looking at our measurements. Here we have four sig figs. Here we have five. Here we have, well, technically this would be three because remember when we added together, the last digit ends at zero. Um, here we have four and here we have three. So the least number is three. So that means that we need to only have three sig figs in our measurement. So one, two, three. So we're going to cut it off here 
and that's going to mean that our final answer is two, uh, 0 0.255 liters. So that's the volume of our gas. Okay, last but not least, part C. What is the density of krypton gas at 18.2 degrees Celsius and 762 millimeters of mercury? So we have here, we're going to write down what we have. So we have temperature. Temperature is equal to 18.2 degrees Celsius. We got to add 273 to that. So 273.15. Uh, so we're going to convert this to Kelvin. So when we do this, we get 273 plus 18. That's 280, 291.35. So 2. 91.35 Kelvin. Again, when we're adding and subtracting, the rule is that our answer here should have this the same number of decimal places as the least number of decimal places. So here, the, this number ends at the five, which is the hundredths place. And this ends at the two, which is the tenths place. So our answer should end at the tenth place. So I'll put a line here. It's always good to keep one more extra digit because if you're going to use this for further calculation like we are, you want to avoid rounding errors. So that's the temperature. Now for the millimeters of mercury, so that's pressure. So pressure is equal to... 762 millimeters of mercury. But we're going to have to convert that to uh, uh, atmospheres, right? So because we, uh, we're going to use uh, the equation here and our R value, um, it could be kil kilopascals or atmospheres. So whichever one you want, you can convert that to. I'm going to prefer atmospheres. So for... This one, I'm going to multiply by the conversion factor of uh, 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere. So millimeters of mercury cancel out. Then I have atmospheres. And let me calculate that. And that's 1.00263. 1.00263 atmospheres. Okay, so now with this problem here, uh, they're asking what is the density of krypton gas at 18.2 degrees Celsius and 762 millimeters, millimeters of mercury. So we want to find the density of the gas. So density is grams over milliliters or liters or something like that. It's a mass over volume. That's what density is. It's, den it's mass over volume. So we need a, uh, an equation that's going to have mass over volume. And that's this one right here. So we're going to use this one because it has the grams, mass in grams, and the volume here. So all we have to do is manipulate that equation to have mass over volume. So what I can do is I can move all of this on this side, right? Multiply by the, ma the molar mass, divide by R and T, both sides, and then divide by volume, and I'll have grams over volume, which is what I want. So I get to get grams over volume, I get G over V. G over V is going to be equal to... MRT over, let's see, uh, no, no, not MRT, my bad, um, M, uh, MP over uh, RT, over RT. So 
mp over rt is going to be the form of this equation that we're going to use. And so now all we need to do is plug everything in. So then we go from there. So then the molar mass. So as we said before, the molar mass is 83.80. So we put 83.80 grams per mole. We're going to multiply that by the pressure. The pressure is 1.00263. Oh, and by the way, for the uh, units or for the uh, sig figs, it's three sig figs here. So we should have three there. So we're going to put a line there to remember. And I can keep at least one digit. So that's going to be 1.00263 atmospheres with a line under the zero to remind myself that it stops at the zero for sig figs. And then I'm going to put RT on the bottom. So since I'm using atmospheres, I'm going to use this R value there. So then it's going to be 0 0.082058. That's liter atmospheres over Kelvin mole. And then that's going to be multiplied by the temperature, which is 291.35. So 291.35 Kelvin. Okay, we got everything. So now all we need to do is check our units. So we want grams over volume. So here we have moles on the top, moles on the bottom. So moles cancel out. We have Kelvin here on the top, Kelvin on the bottom. That cancels out. We have atmospheres here. We have atmospheres on the bottom. So that's going to cancel out. And then we have grams over liters. So everything looks good. So all we need to do is calculate. And when we calculate, we get 3.514. So the density, which is G over V, so that's density is equal to G over V is equal to 3. Point, what did I say? 4, 514. 514 grams per liter. And so that's the answer. Again, sig figs. We want to check our sig figs. So we have four sig figs here three there, we have five there, we have four here, five there. So three is the least number. So you would cut it off after the one. So 3.51 grams per liter. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you use the ideal gas equation to solve your problems, your gas problems. So if you like this video, then please like the video. If you learn from this video, love the video. And also uh, make sure you click the like button there, subscribe to my channel, share the video with your friends. If you uh, uh, subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit the notification bell so you can be notified by all the videos. Click all. Uh, and then finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Um, if you have a question or a problem you want me to go over and help you with, or if you have a topic you want me to cover, then please, by all means, tell me. I would love to do that for you. Uh, thanks for joining me. Have a great day.